Peter, you have such an uncanny uh, capability to ignite memory and the imagination at the same time, which is really a definition of wizardry. Uh, and, Put that uh, on my resume. <laughs> And one of the things that uh, I love what you've been exploring uh, are all the crucibles of, of connection. Uh, education is a crucible of connection. Um, economics is a, a crucible of give and take, exchange, and really uh, all about reciprocity and uh, the heart of generosity. And religion, <laughs> you know, uh, really means to reconnect. And to reconnect to something that you can rely upon. Uh, and then architecture is uh, uh, a way of, of building a, a sense of shelter or home, but it essentially in its primal place is um, around uh, honoring spirits of land and spirits of place. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're using the word restoration, you know, the heart of that word is to restory. Um, and I think we're in a, an exciting time, not only of restoration as a healing word, but also as an active word into restory, you know. And, and uh, what it cultivates uh, for me is, uh, takes me on a, a journey is what all of us might consider is what is wanting to be restoried in our lives at this time, or restoried in education, or restoried in the spirit of generosity that resides in the human spirit that the structures of economics uh, supports, uh, um, or what wants to be restored as far as structures that really create the embrace of place and the embrace of home or the experience of home and what that means. Um, um, so, I like the word restoration a lot, and I especially like that the restorative process, oh, it's a wonderful phrase that you said, the restorative process requires a community. Uh, and when you think about that, it requires connection. Any restorative process requires some kind of connection and is not ultimately ever done alone. Any kind of healing is never done alone. Any kind of restoring, uh, um, when we begin to restory ourselves, uh, um, it's always in connection to something or somewhere or someone uh, in some way. Um, so uh, I, I think it would be wonderful uh, because community also means common unity, which I think the conversation that Larry, you were bringing in and that we were requesting from you around uh, the plebeian uh, conversation is uh, the commons or the common unity or, or to be one together. Uh, um, And the wonderful phrase, the solidarity of solitudes, you know, is another definition, I think, for a greater community. Uh, you know, that in a sense, in the, the day that we've been here together is, you know, we're, um, we're really a solidarity of solitudes, uh, reconnecting and restoring uh, uh, one another uh, through connection and um, and all of the uh, 
categories. I, I love the what you're taking on around education or around health or around religion or around architecture, economics, uh, because those are the crucibles of connection and reconnection and restoring. Mm. Uh, So I liked it a lot. (laughs) (laughs) What a delicious invitation Uh, that is. (laughs) <laughs> there is a yes. fate, yeah. Oh, definitely. The I have its back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the, the rules here. You know, find the unfamiliar, don't offer help. And uh, so let's have a conversation about restoring. So, you know, a, a question, yes. I like the restoring, so you might ask yourself, what's the alternative story that you're living into now? Because I do think even though, regardless of how I talk about it, it's not to argue or fight against patriarchy. It's to create an alternative to it. And uh, so you might ask the question, you're here because you're living into an alternative story. Otherwise, you've found something else to do for these two days. And somehow in the naming of the new story, there's power in that. So you might ask yourself, what name might I today give to the new story that I'm living into? With that, so find two other people. Don't wait to be chosen. Don't offer help. Right? Yep.